All righties, hello everyone, and welcome to your pre-lesson video today on introduction to geometry. So we are gonna get right into it as we have a bit of stuff to cover. So first thing we're gonna go over is the definition for some of the terminology that does come up in geometry because it's really important to you know be able to differentiate it. So essentially, the first thing that we have is point. So a point is denoted either with a letter or a symbol. Like as you can see, we have this dot here to show it's a point A, and that's the letter that it is going to be um, represented by. You could also use like symbols like whatever symbol you want to use. And then a line is where two points or more are connected and it is straight and continuous as you can see here. Obviously it's free, drawn freehand so it would have been a straight line, right? And so with lines you would either denote it with a line x, y with there should be a line on top here or line l because of this l right here. Can you see that? So we could either write this line as line x, y with the bar on top or line l because it's denoted by l right here, right? And then we have arrows over here to show that it is going to be con um, that is good. It is going to continue endlessly. There's no set end point in this line, all right? Now, a plane is a flat surface with no thickness uh, that essentially, you know, extends forever. So this is just a base of it, but essentially a plane will be like infinitely, can go on and on and on forever, all right? So here for this example, we could say like, this is plane BCD because the points BCD line on this plane, or we could also call it as plane P because that's what this plane is called, plane P or plane BCD based on the points that are there. Now, as you can see, point G here is not on the plane, right? So we wouldn't call this plane BCDG or, or point G is on plane P because it's actually underneath it for this specific case, as you can see, right? Now, a space is when we have set of all points, including the points that are, you know, not on the plane or stuff. So in this case, we would have like these curly brackets and we would say the set of all points in this plane is B, C, D, G, like here. Okay. Now, collinear means that um, the points are on the same line, right? So like if you have this point, this point, and these points all in a line. That's what we would call collinear because all these points are on the same line. Now, same thing with coplanar, um, the points that lie on the same plane. Like if you look at BCD, they are coplanar because they are on because they, they lie on the same plane. All right. Now, intersection is where lines cross over and have a common point. So if you remember your systems of equations, if we were to solve it by graphing, right? Remember this point here where they intersect. Right. This is the intersection where you know lines cross over and have a common point. Okay. Now a segment is part of a line and can be indicated by its endpoints. See how A and B, right? There's no arrows continuing past A or B in this case. So that means the segment is from just A to B and that's all. And you can also write it as line AB right here. All right. Now, a ray has a well-defined starting point, see how A here, right, but keeps going forever. So see how A is like a defined starting point because it doesn't have any arrows going this way. So from A to B, and see how the line passes through B with an arrow? So that means it goes from A to B, and once it passes B, it's just going to go on endlessly. And that's how we would write the symbol or denote the part of the line that has become a ray. So A, B with the arrow pointing towards B because from it starts from A and goes continuously onward forever past B. All right. Now with the segment addition postulate, what it essentially means is that if you look here, length A, B plus B, C, right, would equal to A, C. That's essentially what the segment addition postulate means. Like this part here, AB, and this part here, BC, if you combine them, combine them together, you'll get the total length of AC. 
all right? And we'll see this a lot as we go through our deep dive lessons where we have questions using the, the, all these postulates that we're going to come up in a second. Okay, the next thing that we have is the midpoint. So the midpoint is the point that divides a line segment in exactly half. So if we look at this question, right, or this example, point X is the midpoint of line segment AB because it cuts the line in exactly half. All right, now we can find the midpoint by using this formula. Oh, that's supposed to be a parenthesis. There we go. So it will be X1 plus x2, so the coordinates are the two endpoints, divided by 2, and y1 plus y2, which are the y-coordinates of the two endpoints, divided by 2. And we'll actually get to practice a little bit more of how to find a midpoint in a few weeks' time as we go through coordinate geometry. All right. Now, the next thing that we have um, are congruent segments. So essentially, congruent means the same, literally the same. As you can see in the definition, congruent segments are line segments that have equal measures or the same length. And we would use this symbol. So it's like a squiggly line with um, an equal sign underneath it. All right. So if we look here, a uh, line segment AB and line segment MN. If you see these two lines, these two thick lines here, it shows that these two lines have equal length. All right. So this so this symbol here and this symbol here denotes that these two line segments, AB and MN, have the same um, length. That's why when we write um, our statements, we can say line AB is congruent to line MN because of this. And that's how we would write um, congruent statements. All right. Now, a segment bisector. So a bisector essentially is something, a line, right, that is going to cut our angle or other segments into two equal parts, as you can see. So a, essentially, a segment bisector is going to be a line that bisects or divides, you know, an angle or another segment into two equal parts. So if you see here, this and this are going to be two equal segments, congruent segments, because they have the same length, right? And this would be the segment bisector. Now for this case, this would be the segment bisector because it splits this angle in half. See how this is 30 degrees and this is 30 degrees, right? Because this has split this big angle into half, into its 30s, all right? Now, now, a perpendicular bisector is a segment bisector that bisects at 90 degrees, right? So if you look here, this symbol point denotes that it is a right angle. Okay, so as you can see, a perpendicular bisector will bisect a line or an angle at 90 degrees. But normally, you would see this on like line segments, like this example right here, okay? Now, Angles are formed by the intersection of two line segments. As you can see, we have line XY and line ZY here, and they intersect at point Y, right? And so angles can be indicated by its endpoint, so it's like angle XYZ, right? And we use this symbol. So how you can normally tell the where the angle is? So we look X, Y, Z. Normally the letter that's in the middle so in this case, y would be where the angle is. Can you see that? All right. Now, there are all sorts of angles, and we do need to be familiar with what they're called. All right. So an acute angle is an angle that measures between 0 and 90 degrees. All right. An obtuse angle is an angle that measures between 90 and 180 degrees. Now, a right angle angle is an angle that measures exactly at 90 degrees and as we can see right they're denoted by this square symbol right here all right so these are the three really important ones that you do need to remember acute so it's 90 to 90 degree uh, 0 to 90 degrees obtuse which is 90 to 180 degrees and right angle which is exactly 90 degrees okay now, complementary angles are angles that sum up to give you 90 degrees. So as you can see here, right? 
So 60 degrees and 30 degrees are going to be complementary angles if they are summed up because they, when you add 60 and 30, they will give you 90 degrees. All right. Now, supplementary angles are angles that sum up to give you 180 degrees. Like if you look here, 150 and 30 are going to be supplementary angles because if you add them together, it will give you 180 degrees. All right. Now, vertical angles are angles that are opposite to each other when two lines intersect and they would have equal measures and degrees. Like if you look here, right? These two angles, oh, that's supposed to be right. Oh. These two angles are vertical angles to each other, which means that these two would have the same degrees. Whereas these ones, the ones in green, right? These would be um, other sets of vertical angles. So these, this green and this green would be equal to each other, right? Because they are vertical angles. Now the green and the red would not be um, vertical angles, right? So they won't have this equal degrees just because they're not opposite of each other. They're beside each other, but they're not opposite. It has to be opposite each other like this and like this. Does that make sense? All right. Now, another postulate that we have is the angle addition postulate. So if we look, angle MOP plus angle NOP would equal to angle MON, right? So this angle plus this angle would equal to this whole angle, right? And again, we're going to uh, do a lot of practice on this during your deep dive lesson. All right, so if you have any questions so far about this, as usual, bring it to your deep dive lesson or send me an email. Now, the next thing that we have is a transversal. So a transversal is a line that crosses two or more lines. And if two cross lines are parallel, it creates two identical sets of four angles, right? So if you look, this and this would be identical. This and this would be identical, right? See, all these are 35s. So that's two sets so far. Now another set. Oh, look. So as you can see, we have four sets of, um, we have two, sorry, we have two identical sets of four angles. All right. So we have four angles, which are at 35 degrees. So that's one set. And then we have another set of four angles, which would equal to 145 degrees, right? So as you can see, we will play along a lot with this also during your deep dive lesson. Now we're going to get a little bit more into detail of what congruent and similar are, because these are very, very common terms that do come up, um, that do come up on like the ACT and SAT. Right. So congruent essentially means identical. Right. But the shape can be rotated, translated or reflected. And we'll actually see this um, next week as we get into similarity. All right. Now, similar means that they have the same angles and same um, side length ratios. Right. But they have different sizes, as you can see. This is smaller than this but they are similar because of the ratio. And we'll actually get more into this when we get next week into similarity, all right? Um, also, one thing, like I say, congruent, you have this symbol. Similar, you will just have the squiggly line, all right? Now, notation, all right? The order of the vertices, so vertices essentially means corners, all right? In a similarity or congruent statement is important. So if we look, if... Triangle CAT is similar to triangle DOG, then that means angle C corresponds to D because C and D are mentioned first. Angle A corresponds to angle O because they're mentioned next to each other, right? In the middles. And then angle T will correspond to angle G. See how they go in order? C and D are the first letters. A and O are the second letters. And T and G are the third letters. So it corresponds like that. The order does matter in how you write your um, statements, all right? So similarly, how we can say is that site CA corresponds to site DO. 
psi AT would correspond to psi OG, and psi CT would correspond to psi DG. See how they pair up with each other? So yes, the order that you write your statements are, is really, really important. All right, now properties. So with similarities and congruency statements, right, we have these properties that is really good to remember. So that's really good. So reflexive property essentially just means like, you know, a line segment is always congruent to itself if the lengths remain the same. So like line XY is going to be congruent to line XY unless it changes for some reason, right? After like a transformation. Symmetric property just is based on the principle that, you know, if A is B, then B equals A, right? So if we look at this example. So it states, essentially it states that uh, if a line segment is congruent to another line segment, then the second line segment is also congruent to the first line segment. So let's look at this example, right? So our first statement, this one, says that line MN is congruent to line EF, right? So that means we also know that line EF, right, the second statement, that line EF is congruent to line MN. That's essentially what the symmetric property is, right? Now, the transitive, transitive property one is the one that's a little bit more mind-boggling. So let's get into it, right? So it's based on the principle that if A equals B and B equals C, then it means A equals C, all right? So the, essentially, this states that if a line segment is congruent to another line segment and the second line segment is congruent to the third line segment, then the third line segment is congruent to the... Then the first line segment is congruent to the third line segment, right? So let's look. Here we have our first statement, our first and second um, line segment. So line AB is congruent to line XY. Okay, now we're seeing here our second line segment is congruent to our third line segment. So essentially, line XY is congruent to line PQ. Based on this, based on the transitive property, we know that A equals C, right? That means our first line segment is going to be congruent to our third line segment. All right, so that means line AB is going to be congruent to line PQ. Can you see that? I know it can be a little bit confusing, so if you have any questions, bring it to your deep dive lesson or send me an email. All right, on to the last thing of the day. Now, when we, you know, are given lines that are parallel, here are some tricks that I teach to help you identify if how to solve the questions. Obviously, in textbooks, they will give you specific names, but Names are too complicated. I'll give you by alphabets. So if we look here, we have an F. Can you see that? Oh, that's not straight. Let's draw that again. Can you see this F? Right? Doesn't matter how the lines are. As long as you have two parallel lines, see how these arrows are like this? That means they're parallel. All right? If you look at the armpit of the F, right? So our F. That means the two angles at the armpit are going to be congruent. So that means, for example, if this is 30 degrees, that means this is also going to be 30 degrees. All right. Now, if we want to flip it the other way, right? So if, let's say, you know, we look at this. Oh, look, another F. And we say, oh, this is 150 degrees. That means I know that this is going to be 150 degrees also because of F, right? Because we want to look at the armpits. The armpits would have the same um, angles. All right. Now if we look at the second one. So this next one is a Z. Can you see my Z? So at the Z, we want to, again, look at the armpits. All right. At the armpits, the angles are going to be congruent. They're going to be the same. So for example, if this is 60 degrees, then I know that this is going to be 60 degrees because they're both in the armpit of Z. And because I know they're in the armpit of Z, they're going to be congruent to each other. All right. Same thing for here. If we reverse this and it looks like another Z, armpit here, armpit here, I know that this is going to be 120 degrees, 
right? That means this is going to be 120 degrees because again, these two angles are in the armpits of Z, so they're going to be congruent angles, all right? Now, for our last one, our last one is going to be a C. Can you see that? It is a C. Now, with a C, all right, these two angles are actually going to be complementary angles. Sorry, not complementary, um, supplementary. Right, so that means if you were to add these two angles up with each other, right, they would equal to 180 degrees. Well, actually, let's write that again. All right, so that means I know if this is 10 degrees, then that means this should be 170 degrees. All right. So as you can see, C inside the armpit of C, if they would be supplementary angles because if you add them together, they would equal 180 degrees. All right. So just remember, when you're given parallel lines, try to find your Fs, your Zs, and your C's. Your F's and your Z's would have congruent angles, would have the same angles at their armpits. And for your C's, right, like cat's C's, your two angles at the armpits, when you add them together, would equal to 180 degrees. All right. Now, if you have any questions about any of today's um, topics and introduction to geometry, bring it to your deep dive lesson or, you know, send me a message or an email. All right. Thanks for tuning in and have a good rest of your day.